What's happening guys, it's Shane here and today I am going to be doing a Mint budget app simple tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to budget with the mint.com app. It's very simple and easy to use. I'm going to show you a very simple method that's extremely easy to keep track of your finances which will allow you to save money, budget effectively, and take control of your life. And I'm going to be showing you a very simple way of using the Mint app where you don't have to spend hours and hours looking over spreadsheets. Pretty much everything is going to be automated. It doesn't take very long to set up and it will make your life very easy when it comes to keeping track of budgets, saving, etc. And I've tried a lot of methods over the years and this is by far the easiest method I have come across and it is the most effective method as well. And it's great for people who want to be financially responsible but they don't want to spend hours and hours keeping track of their budgets. And this is going to make it very easy for you to take control of your budget without spending hours and hours of boredom looking over spreadsheets that have complicated formulas and all that stuff that you just don't want to have to worry about. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and get started right now. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to mint.com. Here it is right here, www.mint.com. And yeah, don't go to any other website, no fake websites, because you are going to be putting important information into here. And then we're going to go to sign up. You're going to want to punch your best email address in here, phone number, so that you can set up two-factor authentication, and then do a very, very good password here as well. And I already went ahead and I created a test account here, so I'll skip ahead to that. All right, guys, so you created your account, and this is the first screen that you're going to see right here. So right here, you're on the overview tab. This is going to give you a general overview of all of the other tabs, and it's a very useful page to be on. So as you can see here at the top, we got overview, transactions, credit score, bills, budgets, goals, trends, investments, and ways to save. Now on the overview tab, we're going to go over a few things here. First of all, this is where you would link your bank account. Now I didn't do that. I just linked a credit card for the purposes of this example to keep things simple but you would link your bank account right here. Maybe you have several bank accounts, you can link all of them and it will keep track of your total cash that is in your bank account. Here you can link a credit card and that's what I did and that's what I did here. You can link all of them. Here you can do any sorts of loans that you have. So car loan, uh, mortgage, student loans, anything like that, it will keep track of it. Here you can do any investments like Roth IRA, 401k, index funds, ETFs, mutual funds, anything like that that you have invested in. Maybe you just started and you're using Acorns or Robinhood, something like that, something very easy to use. You can link all of that right here in investments. And then down here you've got property. And this is a very interesting one because you can link a house and a house probably is going to be going up in value most likely. And it will automatically track the value of the house whereas if you get a car that's going to be going down in value and you can actually set it up to where it automatically tracks the value of a car so if you buy it for let's say twenty thousand dollars five years later it's only worth about ten thousand dollars it will automatically track that if you want it to and it will show you your net worth based off of that so it's very good for keeping track of your assets and your liabilities. Just with all of these alone, it's tracking your net worth and 99% of it is completely automated once you set it up. Now it has some other very useful features on this home page. So as you can see here, it is upcoming bills. And normally you'd have maybe rent that you pay the first of the month, a car payment you pay on the 10th of the month, something like that. It'll show all of your upcoming bills right here. Down here, you're going to have spending and, you know, normally this would be a lot more. I only linked one credit card, but it'll show your spending from this credit card, different credit cards and your bank account, etc. Now, normally down here, it would actually show your credit score. I don't have that set up on this account, but it'll show your credit score right here. So you don't have to go through the process of applying to that. It just automatically does it every now and then for you. And then down here, you're going to see that it shows your budgets and I'm going to get into this a lot more later, but this is just a general overview and then setting up goals investments and ways to save where it basically gives you really good tips on ways to save and it's kind of like your own personal financial advisor but it's completely 
free. Now going up here, the tabs that you're gonna be paying the most attention to are going to be transactions and budgets. And we're actually gonna go ahead and start in the budgets tab. So let's click on that. Now, as you can see here, I actually already put in some of these budgets. Um, these are some of the most important ones and the ones that you should definitely start out with. So you've got auto and transport, utilities, entertainment, food and dining, um, groceries, as well as restaurants. So I like to separate those because I think that sometimes you can go out a lot and spend a lot more money than you know, just going out and hanging out with friends. And so I really do like to separate those two so that I can track that. And then you've got health and fitness. This might be a gym membership or something along those lines. And then mortgage and rent. Uh, another thing you could put in health and fitness is, you know, doctor's office visits and that sort of thing. Down here, it has everything else, which is basically the uncategorized categories. Now, just to show you how to actually create one of these budgets, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So let's say that you're a business owner and you have a lot of business expenses. We're going to go ahead and go to create budget, choose a category. And then I just like keeping things relatively general unless it's very, very important. Then I'll break it down a little bit more. Some people like to get very, very detailed with it. I like to keep it relatively general. So I'd go to business services, click on that. And then I like to keep it every month generally. There's some things that would be every few months, like let's say you have an insurance payment that's due every few months for life insurance. You might put that there. And then the amount, I'm just gonna put $100 for the purposes of this example. And then you just click OK and bam, there it is, business services. Now you could actually link two different people to an account if you want. So let's say you have a significant other or a spouse. Um, what you'd wanna do is you'd probably want to separate both of them by your name. So you'd create an entertainment, you'd edit details, and then you'd say, you know, entertainment for Shane and entertainment for Jan. Now, as you can see here, there's this everything else tab at the bottom, and these are basically the ones that are uncategorized. Now, if you click on it, it's gonna show you shopping here. And over time, Mint, once you choose which category you want certain things to be in, it, it's actually very intelligent, it has artificial intelligence, and it will know what categories you want certain things to be in automatically. So you might have to spend maybe five or 10 minutes doing it the first few months. And then after a while, you might only have to spend maybe one or two minutes here and there uh, figuring out what category to put things in. It's extremely useful and it adapts to you over time. So let's go ahead and click on this just to see where it's at. And this was a purchase I made from Amazon and it automatically put it under the shopping category, which that is not one of the categories that I have. I like to get more detailed than just general shopping. So what I'm gonna do here is this was some food that I bought from Amazon. I think it was some beef jerky or something like that. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go to food and dining and I'm going to pick groceries. So that one is going to go under groceries and now when we go back to budgets, you're gonna see that category has disappeared. Now when you use this for the first month, there'll probably be maybe 10 or 20 things down there, but as you start using it more and more, there'll only be a few things because most of the things it will know how to categorize automatically. Now as you can see, uh, these are different colors. So for instance, this one right here, entertainment is in the red, and that means that I've spent more than what I budgeted. My budget for it was $10 and I spent $15 on entertainment. These are completely theoretical numbers. Numbers. Obviously, we'd probably be spending more on entertainment. I just, for the purposes of the video, I set it to $10. But actually, I'll show you how you can edit here. Let's say I had a budget of $16. It would be in the yellow. So it's very close to going over my budget, but not quite there. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back to $10. Now, what you would want to do in this situation is you'd want to be like, okay, at the end of the month, I'm looking over my expenses. So you can see where you're spending too much money, where your problems are, where you could maybe be spending a little bit more money potentially. And you would actually just click on entertainment and it would take you to all the purchases you've made. So this is where I bought like a, a candy bar and some chocolate and uh, some coffee at Rite Aid or something like that. Um, this one was where I advertised on Craigslist. I can't believe they're charging 
for you to advertise on Craigslist, but I, I did it just to test it out. But let's just say theoretically, um, you know, you saw here that you were spending like $100 a month on uh, strippers and another $150 a month on beer. It would be very easy to identify that and you could see right away, okay, Obviously, my problem in the entertainment category is strippers and beer, so I should probably stop spending money on strippers and beer. Good plan, right? Another example of this might be like food and dining. So let's say this was an issue here. You could go to, you know, restaurants and you see, okay, I spent money at Woods Coffee on uh, avocado toast. And let's say you were spending, you know, 60% of your total budget on avocado toast. You might think to yourself, well, you know what? I might have an avocado toast addiction and uh, I might wanna stop spending so much money on it. You get the idea. Overall, it just makes it very, very easy for you to identify your problem areas and areas that you can improve on, and that is the secret to saving money. It's the secret to getting better with your finances because 99% of the people out there aren't even aware that they're spending so much money on just random stuff. So big things that you can improve here is you can minimize your cost of living by getting roommates, obviously, or or getting a mortgage and then renting out part of the house, that sort of thing. Uh, car payments are another huge cost that a lot of people see. You know, buying a car that's five to 10 years old is so much cheaper than buying a brand new car. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The insurance, the uh, registration, everything is so much cheaper when you buy a car that's 10 years old and it doesn't depreciate, then you can just sell it for practically the same thing that you bought it for. Eating out and spending money on food all the time instead of just making stuff in crock pots and then, you know, preparing food for the whole week and then just taking you know your food to lunch and dinner and then just eating food for lunch or breakfast that you prepared already at home that saves so much money as well and then another big thing is just not making impulse purchases of toys and other things that you really don't need that is another big problem i see with people all the time so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick and simple mint.com tutorial. I've been dropping some extremely valuable content about personal finance and just being successful in life in general. So definitely go check that out. Hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell and comment down below any videos you might wanna see in the future. And definitely check these videos out right now because these are going to help you tremendously. Hope you guys have a good one and bye for now. Are you ready to finally create a budget that actually works and doesn't cause more work for you every month? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how to create a basic budget so that you can really start knowing where your money is going, how much money is coming in. This is the perfect tip for all of you budget beginners that are really desperately trying to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Meredith Rines. I'm a certified financial planner and a budget strategist. I love helping families learn how to pay down their debt by stop living paycheck to paycheck so they can fully live the life that they have always wanted to live. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can finally stop living paycheck to paycheck by creating an actual flexible workable budget. There's a lot of words, a lot of terms to describe a budget, but basically something that if your life changes or one month is harder than the next month, your budget will work with you instead of against you. So let's get into today's video. Step one, look at your income and your expenses. I want you to pull bank statements, credit card statements, cash withdrawals, anything that you can do to really get an idea of where your money is going. If you are not tracking your spending, you need to do this. And this is why I say three months because something always happens one month from another month where maybe your car maintenance is a lot higher or maybe you had an emergency repair person come to the house or maybe you spent more on groceries because you were entertaining the family. So by getting three months worth of income and expenses, you can really get an average of what it is that you spend each month. If you're not tracking your spending, then it is going to be really hard to determine where your money is going and what exactly you spend it for. Just because you went to Walmart or you shopped online at Amazon doesn't always tell you exactly what you bought and which category it goes under. So I recommend tracking your spending 
at least for a while so that you can get a better handle of where your money is going. I've created three different systems and I'll link a video that I talked about so you can learn three different ways, easy ways to track your spending that fits you and your life so that it doesn't become a burden to you. Now I do this exercise a lot with my clients and they always are shocked to see exactly where their money goes because they don't realize how many times they swipe their card or how many times they add a little extra to the grocery cart, or they go out to eat, or they drive through somewhere real fast. They don't realize all of those times really add up. So this is a good exercise to do maybe with your spouse or your partner so that you can get a good idea of where both of your expenses are at, where your money is going together. Next, I want you to look at your income. And I don't necessarily mean your gross income with what you make from your employer. You know, you maybe you make 35,000, maybe you make 52,000. That's your gross income. So I did a video all about pay stubs and all the deductions and where your money goes from your gross pay to your net pay. And I really recommend watching that because it really explains all the different taxes that you face, whether or not you're putting into retirement, how much your health insurance costs, and any other expenses that maybe are a deduction or benefit that you get from your employer. So go watch that video, I'll link it for you, but I want you to know your net income, how much is actually deposited into your bank account every payday. That's the income you need to use to work off to create a budget. Step two, now this is where the fun comes in. This is where you're going to categorize your expenses. And if you are a office supply nerd like me, you love highlighters and different color pens, you're going to love, love this part. If you are not, sorry about it, you're still gonna have to do it because you need to categorize your expenses. So what I would do is for the last three months of statements that you have, bank statements, credit card statements, I want you to grab different color highlighters for different categories. If you're not sure which categories to use, then you can check out our budget success template checklist guide. It's a freebie. It is amazing. It really walks you through every step that we're doing in this video, but it also gives you some really good ideas of what categories to use in your budget. So you can grab that in the link above or down below this video. What you need to do is you need to go through all of your statements, highlighting by category, by color, what everything is, because then that's going to tell you your average category expense. So you're going to go through and you're going to highlight every time you eat out, every time you go to the grocery store in a specific color. That way, when you go through and you add up month one, month two, month three, and find your average, that's going to be your new grocery budget. Now, if you're not sure what to set for your grocery budget, I recommend doing $100 per person per family, but there's always stipulations to that. So just add up your average at this point, then we'll worry about the actual amount it is later on to try to get that lowered. Step three is I want you to create your financial goals together as a family, with your partner, with your kids, whatever it is, so that way everyone is on the same page. Everyone can contribute. And I've talked about this in a video I did a few weeks ago where my husband and I both thought we were saving for the same thing. He thought he was saving for land and that's what we were working on. I thought we were saving to build a home. And when we sat down and realized that we were saving the same money for two different things, it's not going to work. You can't earmark the same dollar for two goals. You'll never get there. That's why you really need to do this together so that way your goals are in sync with one another and you both can compromise, you both can get what you want at the same time while still understanding what you're working towards and why you're saving your money. Step four is to create a zero-based budget. And what this means is that when everything is said and done on paper, your income matches your expenses to the dollar. What that will do is it will give purpose to every single dollar that flows in and out of your bank account. And that is vital when you're learning how to budget because if you have money left over, what are you going to do with it? You're probably going to blow it. You're probably going to buy something you shouldn't do. You're probably going to overspend because you thought you had more than what you did. That's why on paper, the first thing you do is you create a zero-based budget where you list out all your income, all your expenses, and you make sure those two totals match. 
If they don't match, let's say you have more income than you do expenses. That is amazing because you have a few options. You can put that money towards a debt to get that down even faster. Maybe you don't have an emergency fund. If you don't, I would recommend starting one immediately because it will create a buffer if something does happen with your budget. So if you have extra money left over, you have more income than you do expenses. You can put it towards debt, you can put it towards your savings, you can put it towards retirement and all those other things, but my first priority would be emergency fund and then debt. Now what if you have more expenses than you do income? Well, that's a little bit trickier because you're gonna have to really look at your expenses. Can you lower your grocery budget? Earlier we talked about $100 per person per month. Can you aim for that goal? Will that help you? Could you cut your eating out expenses? Maybe you start packing lunches so that way you don't have to eat out five days a week when you're running to and from meetings. Look at your expenses very strictly so that way you can lower those. And if you have looked at all of your variable flexible spending like groceries, eating out, gas, those kind of things, then that's when you can call all of your other providers like your satellite provider, your phone provider and try to negotiate a lower bill, a smaller package, or something along those lines to lower your bill. Maybe you don't need a thousand different channels. Maybe you only need a hundred channels with no movies and no, you know, no NFL red ticket, red zone sports package. Obviously, I don't know what the name is. Step five is I want you to tweak as you go along. Most families, once they create their original budget, they have the zero-based budget, it is a work of art, it took them forever to get it done, they stop. They don't ever look at it again, they fill it in month to month, and if they go over, they go over, if they're under, they're under, and they don't really look at it. I want you to tweak it. That's what makes a budget so workable and flexible, is because you're working it, you're making it, you're tweaking it, you're adjusting it as you and your family need it. So let's say you go through at least a month, maybe two months, and you keep noticing that your grocery bill is higher than what your budget is. And maybe your eating out is lower than what you budgeted. Well, maybe because you're eating at home more. So you need to pull from your eating out budget and add it to your grocery budget. Or maybe you're noticing that your gas for your car is a lot higher because you're having to commute longer now to get to work. Okay, well, find where you can cut somewhere to add to another budget that you need it. That's the whole point of having a flexible budget is because you're working it, you're modifying it as you go along. Now, what I would really, really suggest is that you look at at least two, maybe possibly three months worth of expenses before you change a category. Just because you are over one month in groceries doesn't mean you will be permanently. Maybe you're over because you had family in town or you hosted a birthday party or something along those lines. So don't make any major adjustments after one month of spending. Look at two, maybe three months worth so that you can have a clear picture of what your average is. I wanna share with you a bonus tip because I know a lot of families really struggle with budgeting because they feel as if it's overwhelming, they get frustrated, it's just a lot of work, it takes a lot of time. So I want you to look at your budget on a weekly basis. I'm a huge fan of money dates because I think they actually work. When you sit down with your spouse every week, you talk about money, you look at your budget, you look at your spending, you add it all up, you update everything. Then at the end of the month, when you're actually looking at a whole month's worth of expenses, it doesn't take you very long because you've already done the heavy lifting throughout the whole month. It is a lot easier to look at and track one week's worth of expenses over 30 days worth of expenses. So I want you to actually look at your budget on a weekly basis. Set up a reoccurring appointment in your phone, on your calendar, with you and your spouse to sit down and do this together. We typically do this on Sundays, but if we're traveling, we literally just move the appointment because we won't miss it. Now that you know how to create a budget, I want to know what's one category that you tend to overspend in every single month. But don't forget, grab that budget success checklist. It goes in even deeper than what we've talked about today. I've broken it into nine steps in this guide. 
to really get you from no budget to having an actual budget. It even includes a template for you. I appreciate you watching and if you enjoyed this video and found value, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out.